Okay guys, welcome to the stock market technical analysis. We're gonna look for trade ideas using the charts. I'm gonna get right into it. I'm gonna to try to get this video out before the close. Not that there's anything super important to take action to right now, but if anybody has any positions they wanna remove or anything like that. <clears throat> All right, triple Q's guys. So we are, you know, rallying today pretty mildly. The thing I'm really focusing in on the triple Q's, you can see the PPO right there. See if I zoom in on that, it's 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 flatlined. It, it hasn't. There's no bearish PPO crossover. We're 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 in a battle zone right now. The bulls and the bears are fighting it out for kind of the move that they want to put in. And I just that, that you know we need to see a bearish crossover. We need to see that cross down. We're not getting that yet. So very you know I'm very focused on that one. Um, the other thing is if I go to the hourly on the triple Qs. You'll see here that we had this little minor downtrend line here. We're, we're above that now. Now, not by much. And it does look like this is a lot of stop, you know, kind of covering, people covering their uh, their shorts. Um, I'm not saying super impulsive buying, but it, 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 so I think we can continue to maybe drift a little higher. And let me tell you what I think is going to happen at this point with, with what the charts show. I think we'll probably drift up, maybe do a back test of this trend line, this red trend line. This is the rally. We have broken down. So here, you know, this is basically your 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 rally we've been in since uh, what since January. We've broken down, clearly broke that trend. And I think we're gonna come in for a back test, hit that trend line, probably pop up and make a new high, just a slightly new high above this 313.50 area. Uh, and if we do it soon, which could happen tomorrow, uh, we'll have a negative divergence on the daily. Let me go to the, the daily chart. So you can see here, if I zoom, if I show you here on the uh, RSI, if we pop up soon, it's gonna look something like that and we'll start to have that, we'll have that negative divergence on the daily. Same with the PPO, it'll look something like that. So, you know, I'm looking for that. I don't know if we'll get it, but if we see that, we see that negative divergence, then at that point, I think one, it's objective just short on a back test of this tr red trend line here. And if you, you know, for me, that is a very objective short, as long as we have the divergence intact. And then two, um, obviously a break, you know, a rejection, some sort of a rejection candle, whether that's a bearish engulfing candle, a doji, some sort of reversal candlestick that tells us that the cues is done rallying. So that's all I really see on the triple Qs. If I look at the NASDAQ futures, um, you know, this is kind of that corresponding, well, th this is your bear trend here. And then as I zoom in, uh, let's go down to the hourly. You'll see here, this is kind of that corresponding little minor trend line I just pointed out on the triple Qs. We're trading above it. We're at resistance right now within this little minor channel we've been creating. Um, so yeah, it could pull back, but in general, it doesn't look like you know, it, it just, I don't see a sell signal in general. So we could drift higher. Uh, I'm, I am kind of looking for that divergent high on the daily chart. On the Q or on the NASDAQ futures, um, you know, we've got downward momentum right now. We just don't have a new higher high in price. So if we pop up and kind of pop the high right there, it's about 12, 8, 34. Uh, 12,834 or something like that. Pop over there, set a new high in price while keeping momentum dropping, you know, a lower momentum point. We'll have that negative divergence. And to me, that's likely gonna set us up for that move down to, for a back test of this trend line. Okay, so that in the, that in the short term, that's what it looks like is gonna happen. I can't guarantee that obviously. We could just start rolling over now, but um, it would be, you know, we. It, you know, when you have divergence on the daily, it signals, you know, that you're going to have a, a actual pretty good swing trade, the potential for it. If I go to the hourly, we have the divergence already on the hourly. Okay, there it is right there. And it's right there. So obviously, you don't need negative divergence on the daily uh, to reverse trend. But it would be good to see it to have it on the hourly and the daily put in some sort of a doji reversal candle. And that's likely going to be, you know, a, a pretty strong sell signal. So, okay, so you trade that how you want. I mean, in general, I think maybe in the short term we go a little higher. I think it makes, and then I think in the medium term we're going to go lower. So, as a swing short, I think it still makes sense to stay short because the upside 
from my perspective is pretty limited, although there might be a little more upside. I think it's relatively limited because let's say we pop over here and make that divergent high, you're looking at about, a, you know, potentially about 2% more in triple Qs to the upside. And then the downside would be a back test of this trend line or at a minimum the 200 day simple moving average. And from where we're at now, that's a drop of about eh, five and a half percent. So, you know, a little bit better than a two to one risk reward ratio. So again, I, the, the risk, you know, is to the downside, all right? Okay, lots of people asking me about gold, so let's go through this. All right, here's gold bullion. We'll look at the futures and gold bullion. We're drifting lower. Obviously, we had that divergent high, especially on the futures, but um, <clears throat> drifting lower in what looks to be a bullish falling wedge pattern here on the hourly chart. We've got some bullish divergence showing up on the hourly. So in general, we're starting to set up bullish. No buy signal, no breakout. You can buy at support or buy on the breakout. I'd prefer at this point to buy on the breakout, okay? So that's all I really see there on the futures. Oh, and then if I go to gold bullion, actually back to the daily, um, I've got decent support right down here at about 18.05, uh, pretty good support right down there. So I've got lots of reactions marked out on that level. One, two, there's another three, four, bunch through here. So you know, good, good level of support. So I think we could continue to drift lower, maybe pop down, hit it. Um, just there's no buy signal right now. So if I look at the gold futures, uh, this is kind of a zone of support from what I can tell, but basically anywhere from anywhere from about right there at 1834 down to about 1822 is decent support. You can see we had reactions right through here. There's a reaction, and then again, right through there. So getting close to support, although haven't quite hit it perfectly, but very close. If I look at the hourly chart on the NASDAQ futures, we've got, you know, it's kind of a similar setup where we've got this bear or bullish uh, falling wedge pattern, something like this. Um, and again, we're, we're to the downside. This looks like stop running action. Maybe we go a little lower, maybe not. It's definitely very close to the to the support zone, so I I wouldn't want to be short. If I was short on this, I, I would I would likely be covering and really more looking to longs, uh, but no real buy signal yet. Let's look at GDX. GDX. Uh, let's go to the daily here. <clears throat> okay, so GDX, you've got the 200-day moving average just below, uh, and we've got really good support right here at about 27.30. So I could see some more downside. You know, maybe we're going to drift down, hit that. Maybe not. The 200 should, you know, it, we're enter, we're getting close to a zone of support. So nothing says we're going to hit the 200. I think it, we're so close, it, it would make sense. Uh, from where we're at now, that's another, oh, 2% down. And then probably going to start to hold up and, you know, buyers should step in there. But look at the hourly. Uh, you can see starting to build some bullish divergence on the hourly. Uh, PPO, all right, and then the RSI just kind of barely has it. Nothing. So again, it's not a, a firm enough chart for me to really want to be jumping all over quite yet. I think it's probably going to take a little time to kind of shape up. It does look decent, but not not perfect. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to be watching these. I think we're getting close to where we want to start buying these, but again, not quite perfect. Okay, let's look at the semiconductors. It's kind of the bleeding edge of tech. So if we're going to drop, we'll usually drop here first. On the semiconductors, we'll go to the daily chart. Um, you can see we do have that negative divergence on the daily, all right? So there it is. I've got it kind of marked out. It's, it's just barely hanging on to it, but it is there. So, you know, any little pop over that former high, and it's going to be a divergent high. And again, it these look like they're about to roll over, all right? They're, we're kind of grinding higher. We're also at like de decent um, resistance, okay? Lots of reactions right in the, this level, and it's it's basically right here at 423.30. You can see we're just kind of grinding it out. This looks like distribution to me, all right? So that is basically the way this will play out if it is distribution is we're going to pop, make these little divergent highs. It's going to suck in some longs. Meanwhile, the institutions are unloading their, their positions, their large positions. 
okay? And and then once that's done and the institutions are done selling uh, or, you know, un, pretty much unloading, there's there's really no buyers left and it, it, come, it goes down. So that's what that looks like to me. Whether that plays out, we'll wait and see, but the di divergences are intact. And if I go to like NVIDIA, you can see just kind of rallying, just, you know, we're making a new high right now, um, or we did yesterday. It is a divergent high uh, on just barely. I mean, again, little work to do here. So nothing that's screaming short, but a little bit of work. And I'm also watching things like ASML. This one, um, when these break, they'll probably all break together. But this one's holding on to this nice, clean, uh, bearish rising wedge pattern. All right, and you can see, here we are, just last four days, just kind of holding on to it. Negative divergence on the daily tells me this is going to break. We're very close to breaking, so I just need to see that break for the sell signal, and it's likely going to be uh, pretty impulsive, so we're just waiting for that. When this breaks, likely NVIDIA is going to break, and, and we'll see tech starting to, to break as well. Something to keep in mind on when we're looking at tech, the, um, the interest rates. Well, uh, 10 year treasury interest rates are rising. Rising interest rates are bearish for tech especially. Uh, and we are continuing to see the uh, interest rates rise. So the bond market is, is going in a different direction than the stock market, okay? Bonds are selling off and interest rates are rising. That should be bearish for tech. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's one way to think of it. The other way I guess is if there is true rotation into growth and everybody's selling their bonds and their safety, uh, and they're buying, uh, they just wanna buy tech, then yeah, you could see bonds sell off and, and you'll see interest rates rise, but, and they're rising because they're expecting growth. So that is another way to look at it fundamentally, but as of right now, just, we'll keep an eye on this. You know, when I go and look at the last, this looks like it's heading straight up to 390 and the last time that interest rates were at 390 was back here in you know late December early January basically and when I go to the triple Q's and I look at where that was at in late December early January we were all the way down here all right down at 260 so I don't know is that foretelling something are we going to you know are we going to head down uh, that remains to be seen as of right now I don't have a Super strong convi conviction that we're going to roll over quite yet. I maybe we make that divergent high. We'll see how the thing, how the chart looks up there. Um, so, in my opinion, it makes sense to keep things moderate. You know, I think it make. You know, I think a short position, a uh, moderate short position is fine. But um, it, you know, not nothing heavy. So here's one I pointed out just recently. L L Y. This is healthcare. Healthcare seems to be weak. So. Um, this one is being sold off. You can see basically if I roll out, uh, this is going back to 2020. We've got support. All right, we've got support there and I've got a reaction there. We broke, we back tested and we're getting rejected. So we got the 200 day, maybe it'll battle it out a little bit and consolidate. But at the end of the day, I think we're gonna break to the downside, start to head lower on that one. Um, and you know, 314 looks to be the next level of support once you get through the 200 day simple moving average and then another one is mrk this one i had someone bug me that you know we the other day that we were popped up above this resistance level of 107.83 one oh sorry it's about 108.60 108.50 um and it still looked fine and at the end of the day we have we're coming off a divergent high on the daily chart big negative divergence we have a big sell signal that was put in place and we're in a downtrend that, you know, downtrends don't go straight down, guys. So if something comes down, you're going to have reactive bounces and then you continue the major trend. So that's what it looks like to me. Looks like we're heading back down to these lows down here at 101.75. And here's how I think it'll go. I think we'll come down, probably get a little reactive bounce up to like there and then roll over down to the 200 and probably our final uh, profit target. So... That is where I think that one's heading. Okay, that's all I have for today. So I'm going to get this one out there, and I will catch you guys on the next one.